So we've got 30 minutes for this conversation today, Paul, in terms of um, coaching in uncertainty. And um, before I bring you in, actually, I just want to say um, for the people that have trained with us, you know, one of the reasons we spend so much time working on our presence and really enabling us to be mindful and resourced and present as coaches is because, you know, at times we're going to be uh, working with clients who, you know, or maybe experience I'm, I'm chuckling because my, are most people experiencing uncertainty at the moment but that sort of sense of their moments there may be critical moments in the conversation or maybe there's a topic that's being bought and underneath all the training that's happened you know really we're cultivating our seat you know our ability to be fully present and resourced for the coachee and so, you know, one of the themes that has come up through supervision has been this, this topic. And it was one of the reasons why I reached out to, to you, Paul, um, just to, to hear from your expertise in, in this area. So maybe just as a way of helping the group understand more about you and um, I suppose what, what you're bringing in terms of this topic. Let's, let's spend a bit of time perhaps just exploring what's brought you, you know, as a coach. To, to working with uncertainty. Yeah, thanks, Damien. Um, so for me, I think there's two, two lenses that kind of pushed me in this direction. The first one was the, the, la the first chunk of my career, so over a decade's worth, I was working at one of the big four and I worked in the restructuring team. So organisations that were in distress, normally companies, but when I say organisations, there are um groups of people as I'm, I'm thinking of over uh when i was working in australia not governmental bodies that were experiencing this but cash flow um problems difficulties sometimes operational if there was one theme that went through all of that it was an element of uncertainty and that could be really significant i remember turning up to a business on a friday afternoon and we said to you know when when will you run out of money? And they said, we don't, we don't know. We know it's happening soon. And we did about half an hour's work and said, well, actually it's Monday morning. So really clear something's going to happen. And they were uncertain about what that meant all the way through to organizations where there were things rumbling leading to uncertainty. Don't know who the investors were going to be. Didn't know what the team structure was going to be, but there was a theme throughout that. And then my favorite bit was working with individuals in that space. And I, I remember really early on spotting, why is it some people are really comfortable in this space? They kind of, there's like a, there's a thrive to it. And some people find it excruciatingly difficult. Um, and I, I'd never saw any data, but I always wondered, is there a difference between if you, if you, if you kind of lean into it and thrive in it, is there a difference in the outcomes? So that was the first part of my career. And then in my early 30s, whilst I was still in that career, to cut a long story short, and it's got, it's got a, a good ending for me, but I had a toothache that wouldn't go away. I went to the dentist and the doctor, and all within the space of about a week and a half, I went from being really active, doing lots of work, to being rushed to St. George's Hospital in Tooting and being told that I had a really rare and aggressive form of leukaemia. Um, and I am still here. It's 12 years later. I'm, I'm lucky to say that I'm in a, a great position now compared to where I was, but I had my life turned upside down. And the treatment for the, for the type of leukemia I had was to be put in an isolation room for the best part of a year, um, 2010. And in that space, uh, I was I was kind of I, I, yeah isolation for the best part of that year S significant uncertainty so I didn't find out immediately but I found out later that the five year survival statistics were seven or eight out of a hundred um, but even during the treatment one of the bits that I struggled with the most was I was given chemotherapy and then I would say, right, please tell me when I will know if this has worked or not. Please tell me what, what the next stages are. And consistently it was, we know we've given you chemo. 
we know it will take between four to seven weeks to find out whether or how effective it's been. So that meant all of my processes about well, what's the deadline? What do I need to do? I was just given a really consistent with we're, we're following this path, but we're not really sure. And I said, OK, so how many rounds of chemo do I have? We're not really sure. OK, and if the chemo doesn't work, well, we're not really sure yet. There are a myriad of different opportunities. And of everything that I found difficult in that space, that was the one I found hardest. That was the one I found hardest. And in that space, there was a doctor that sat on the end of my bed one day and said, look, you, you've got there's there's two types of mindset in this space. So some people get that it's uncertain. They kind of work through it. And then there are those that really struggle with it. Normally, that has if you're in that space, if you kind of work through it in, a, in an OK way, it has a positive impact. It, it doesn't guarantee anything, but it has a positive impact. And I looked at it. I still remember him. He was a great doctor. But I said, I hope you're about to tell me I've got the right mindset. Otherwise, this is not a good pep talk. And he had a big smile on his face. And that really sparked an interest in me, even in that space. And I said, can you tell me what it is then? What are the behaviours? What are the qualities? And he said, no, no I, can't, I can't tell you. I sort of he used the, the elephant thing. I can tell you when I see it in a patient, but I can't do it anymore. That you can see that that. that image of that conversation still sits in my memory the reason i'm working uncertainty is partly because of that so i remember leaving and thinking i want to be able to answer that and i want to be able to help people working through any sense of uncertainty any sense of uncertainty and that's when my career trajectory changed retrained find this space fascinating and i've used this phrase before but all the the kind of the the reading i've done the, the people I've listened to, the investigations I have, some people call it research, but there was a phrase that I picked up before, which is me search. So this is really important to me, but having known it, it's really lovely to, to share it, to share it, because it's not mine. It's not mine. I definitely don't have any models or tools that I want to put, this is the golden model. <laughs> Maybe one day, but not, not now. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. And I appreciate you sharing um, both stories, actually. And I think, you know, as coaches, there's always the bit around, well, what's our, our story, you know? And because all of that's energized, isn't it? When we're, when we're meeting someone in this space, you know, whether that's a, a topic around uncertainty or just those uncertain moments, you know? Um, so, so thank you. And there's probably so much I'd love to ask you just about those experiences and and really what that that's taught you but you know I'm conscious of time and I, I, I want to sort of bring in just thinking about what we are meeting as coaches at the moment and um at some at some levels this is quite an obvious question but I think it's helpful so why why do you think so many people are talking about this at the moment Paul as, yeah. as a topic sure um I'm conscious that I can give a really flippant answer which is it's everywhere I think if we if you if we delve into that in a bit more detail, to me, what Roland's saying is everywhere in my mind and has played out in some conversations I've had with people I'm working with. It's almost at every level. So globally, I think there's uncertainty and that's economically and politically. And if you go down a level within regions, there's an awful lot of uncertainty. And sometimes it's economic, sometimes it's political, sometimes there's other factors. And if you go down the level within countries, within organisations, those that so the economic and the political are having an impact in organisations, but it also seems really powerful at the moment for companies to be going through restructurings. I'm not sure I've ever worked with so many individuals that say, well, we're having a massive restructuring, which is having impacts across the board, which then in turn has impacts on teams and individuals and so therefore you've got organizational change uncertainty that goes with it as well as external so political economic and then we can obviously bring in the the medical or the covid so uh, it's a really obvious topic but lots of um people that i was working with during covid was the the uncertainty was i love being a leader but i used to lead by looking out across the floor and i could smell what was going on with the team 
Yeah, I've just realised how that sounded. So <laughs> there was like a sense within them. There was a sense within them that they knew what was going on in the team. If they could smell it, I think they would give them other data. Uh, <laughs> so I, I shouldn't make myself laugh like that. I can only apologise. So the, um, and then they were saying that everything now is online. So there was a, a personal sense of I don't know how to lead in this space because I, I don't get the data that I used to get. And that was leading to uncertainty. So, so to me, it's almost at every level. And when it's at every level, um, individuals can then think, well, what? it just feels like it's everywhere. I, d I don't know. It, it, does that resonate with you, Damien? I, I'm, I know well, everyone listening will have their own lens on Sure, that. sure. It does. I mean, it does. It does. And I suppose, you know, you know, existentially, there's uncertainty we take the, the the climate catastrophe you know that we're experiencing so i think at a very very deep level this is there implicitly and explicitly in in the conversations that, that we're holding and you know coaches for a long time we say things like well the only constant is change you know but the reality is you know things are fundamentally changing you know um and for a lot of my coaching clients, yes, there may be personal choices that are emerging out of this around, you know, uh, who I want to be now. But there's a lot of anxiety that I'm meeting as a coach, you know, in terms of what the client is bringing for themselves, but also what's within the system. And again, we could look at levels of systems, you know. Mm -hmm. mm. And um, I mean, and again, this is a short session today, and I'm sure we could spend time unpicking all these different levels in terms of people's experiences that are, that are watching this as well but you know coaches we often want to know the the so what bit really um and i suppose you know based on your experiences paul and i appreciate you're saying that you you know you haven't developed your own model yet or yeah. way of working with this but i'm sure there are key approaches that inform your practice as a coach working in uncertainty yeah. so i suppose the question would be there for so what do you rely on you know in your own practice yeah mm -hmm. um so i i like a two-part answer i think that the first bit which and i share this in the hope that this uh creates a sense of comfort or ease but the core skills that a great coach will do to me are effective in this space so i think um being curious about what that uncertainty means within the other person, um, non-judgmental, um, so, so therefore core listening skills, questioning skills, so insightful questions that can help someone, um, you know, you can talk about reframing of that uncertainty. All the core skills to me are really effective. There are other models, tools, techniques that I think you can layer into that that I've found have been helpful. Um, so if I just pick a couple, I quite like, for me, the Theory U stuff, the Otto Sharma Theory U, where we delve into the unknown and are comfortable in that unknown for there to be um, a different awareness and an outcome realization gives me sense when I'm entering that conversation we're going into the unknown but it's being comfortable in the unknown and the unknown and uncertainty therefore to me there's a link in that so that's for me I also then sometimes will share that with the person that I'm working with so we're going to delve into the unknown the uncertain with with a comfort that there's value in the process that will that will come will come back to an outcome so the theory you and then another another couple that have really resonated. One I'm I'm really happy to share. You you shared with me a number of years ago, which is the windows of tolerance idea. So the idea that we all have tolerance, and in in this sense, we can liken it to um we can link we can take the the core concept as uncertainty, but you can have a central. There's a, there's a three layer diagram so I, i'm quite visual so i remember it like this and at the top you've got hyper arousal then you've got your window of tolerance and at the bottom you've got hypo arousal and the idea being that when there's so much going on when we're hyper aroused that is where we're thinking about um like there's there's too much so we're in the fight or the flight response 
the, the opposite, hypoarousal, is where we're just a bit overwhelmed. So we kind of go into the freeze. And if, we're, so as coaches, we're working with people that are psychologically well. So that is a model that therapists can use with people that are potentially really withdrawn. I liken that to, or when I'm working with someone, it's, it's conversations. Like, so if that's the model, hypoarousal might, might play out as things like indecision or a withdrawal from that area of their work. And then I just use normal coaching techniques what's going on let's explore it does that serve you best at the moment does that serve you best and then the opposite is if someone is in fight or flight or the uh, to the fight aspect is are you being slightly more aggressive with topics with projects with um with individuals as a result of the uncertainty and then letting them sit with that and draw their own conclusions does that serve you best at the moment um so that's the windows of tolerance. And I find that really helpful. Yeah, and then the other I, one. Can I is, just add, um, can I just add, Paul? Yeah, that, please that window? Because I know there's coaches listening, but I think the key thing I'd always say with that window is if the coach is outside of that in the session, how do you bring them back into that sort of coherent state, which is, um, you know, all of the practices I'm sure people will, are familiar with, but for our way of working very much around centering and grounding the coachee before you move into that exploration, if they're outside of their, sort of coherent state i would say yeah yeah mm -hmm. thanks david thank you uh yeah and in that sense i often because if you're working with uncertainty it's very common that anxiety pops up and so i'm conscious of the choice of okay so if the emotion is big asking thinking questions in that space that helps them regulate in that space um and then the other model, which I, I think this is really simple to share with someone and, and adds real context to the conversations, which is the, the Mason. Uh, he did some work on safe, unsafe, um, certain, uncertain. So he created a grid. So if you've got, if you can imagine safe at the top and unsafe at the bottom, certain on one side, uncertain on another, the idea that we can be in any of those spaces. So if I and and so just sharing that with someone and saying, so where do you sit at the moment in relation to this? And I say, well, you know, and then it's always going to be more complex. But OK, so so, you know, where where might you sit on an average day? And they can start talking about well, it's pretty uncertain. Then you can say, OK, is it safe or unsafe? And it gives them a different lens and then asking them where would they rather be and what's within their control to move in that direction? Um, that's that's it, it, it's a it's, I suppose it's introducing a tool and then also like, like we all do you get flavor of whether that's going to work for someone or not and then it's just having other more uh, other models or tools to to refer to I, they're kind of the most common there are others what well, I'm wondering what you what you see or hear or how do you tend to work with yeah um well, I suppose for me, if I'm working with a coach, he's in a place of uncertainty. Um, I feel like if I was supervising a coach that was working, it's, there's going to be a lot about self-care, you know, um, and their resilience. So um, so for me, in my practice would, you know, and people won't be surprised, but that mindfulness piece, you know, I'm really would be supporting a coach to develop their capacity to to be in the present rather than engage in the narratives that may be happening around the the uncertainty that's happening um and and developing those qualities of self-compassion i would say because you know in in these moments we're not always talking to ourselves like uh, we were the best friends so i would I'd, i suppose that would be a core piece from from my own coaching practice and then you know for the coaches who are on here that that, that come to supervision with me in person they know that i often use constellations and systemic processes as a way of sort of exploring some of the psychological and systemic dynamics that are playing out for someone because again once you map something out and the person can see what's really at play um you know often they will, will have a different they have a different impact on their felt sense of the uncertainty you know um and what's in their control i would say so i suppose there's an offer too for my practice would always be systemic work and mindfulness you know mm -hmm. Mm. I'm also I'm I'm conscious of the when we talk about working on ourselves as a coach quite in um 
Barry Mason wrote a paper that surrounded his model. And one of the one of the phrases he uses that really resonated with me is if we as the person that's working with the person experiencing it, if we don't understand our own relationship to that, it can lead us to somewhere. And one of the things which I think comes from a lovely intent, but isn't helpful, is where the so if, as a coach, if I think, well, I've got to get to certainty, I'm going to jump to what he described as premature certainty. I quite like that. And he was saying it's not for us to be driving that, it's to be comfortable with them in that space. Mm. He described almost the opposite of being something called authoritative doubt. So we own that we're comfortable in this space we're not going to drive certainty for them and there's something in those words that really resonated with me about um yeah what what's my role in this space what's my role in this space mm. yeah and and being comfortable to hold the coachee in that uncertainty you know whether yeah. that's unsafe certainty or safe certainty if we're using that model yeah. um and I think it's a wonderful exercise to explore in supervision or if you've got a peer group and I'm just thinking of the people here, yeah. you know, so what's, what's your experience of stepping out of your comfort zone as a coach? You know, what do you notice? What are the patterns? What are the triggers? And actually, you know, working on this. I think sometimes coaches, um, you know, they don't often build their capacity to be with, that 60 watt light bulb or that 70 watt light bulb so actually when it comes it takes us out of window of tolerance just to go back to the other model you're yeah. saying yeah. so i think that framework you're sharing is quite a helpful one to actually play with as a coach yeah mm -hmm. so how about thinking about um i suppose you know we're, we've got a few minutes left but a sense of i suppose what's next paul you know if there are a couple of models you've shared about the why I suppose what are your your hopes and your wishes around this as a yeah. as a theme for coaches i'd say yeah well so theme the theme i have for coaches is actually is is secondary to the theme i have but this is enormous and i'm going to own that it's enormous and i don't know how to get there but i would love for us to be in a society where everyone is comfortable with that uncertainty and that they're able to respond to the uncertainty rather than react to it so that's a that's a big picture i'm not going to own that i'll fix that <laughs> immediately but i'd love to move in that direction i think that my wish i suppose in the coaching space in the world is in service of that that larger piece of work it'd be lovely for our community coaches to be comfortable working in that space to enable others to work in that space to enable others to work in that space and i'm i'm aware from my days in restructuring that some people naturally love that space they just, people gravitate towards it and it's really comfortable i do wonder if my experience in restructuring taught me an element of that but it's helping others to be in that space others to be in that space that's my hope and if and if i suppose based on your experiences paul and i appreciate you know because of you know that that fundamental experience you had personally but also your your previous work from those experiences if there was one thing you would encourage the coaches that are listening to to do if this was a capacity they wanted to develop for themselves what what would your advice be mm. I, I like the coaching approach to this, which is to, to take time to ask yourself the question and what you need in order to, to work well in that place. In order to work well in that place, because I, I really value that there are lots of different ways to get comfortable with working in this space. Mm. I like that. The, the question, what will resource you to do great work in this space? because mm -mm. slightly answer that if i may for some people it might be do you know what i want some more comfort through understanding there's loads of neuroscience psychology about what's going on in our brains and that can be really helpful but for others it's uh what's my relationship to this topic this uncertainty mm -hmm. and how do i then make use of that in the conversations i'm having Thanks, Paul. I'm sure, there are others actually. But... Well, and just, and just to say, 
And if it's an and, you'd like to understand the neuroscience and psychology and your own relationship and how you resource, just, just to say to the group that next year, Paul will be running a CPD day for, for our group and our alumni just around this topic, really sharing the tools, the approaches, et cetera, that he uses in the space. So that's of interest. You know, we will be sending information out around that uh, the early part of next year. So uh, uh, we're coming sort of close to time, and these are always supposed to be bite-sized CPD sessions, just to start some thinking around this. I really want to say firstly, thank you, Paul, for your time. I really appreciate, you know, you making the time for this. Just what would you like to say to the group just as a way of closing for yourself? Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, my, my hope is that this is helpful for you, that you can take this and it either sparks an interest or it gives you confidence or comfort. That's my intent. I hope. I hope that's the case. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. And just to say to, to everybody that's, that's listening in, uh, we have got another webinar next Monday, um, which is on a topic that's very dear to my own heart and my own practice, which is transpersonal coaching. So next Monday at two o'clock, a bit of a later time, I'll be in a dialogue with Karen Prentice, who's one of our uh, core faculty as well. So thanks to everybody for dialing in. I really hope there is some food for thought for you personally and professionally from, from this session. Really uh, look forward to connecting again soon and uh, go well in the meantime. Thank you.